The final assessment interview is the finale of the APC process, so it's so important that you get this right. If you are undertaking your APC at the moment, or you're thinking about it, keep watching this video as I'm giving some tips on how to give your best performance. Now, if you're visiting the channel for the first time today, please consider subscribing, and if you do, please remember to hit the bell so when we release our next video, you'll get that notification. Now, I've sat the APC myself, and I'm also a registered RICS assessor, so I know what it's like to be on either side of the table in this interview. So let's get into it. Nail the presentation. The time when you're giving your presentation in that interview is the only time that you will control. Beyond that point, it's over to the assessors and the chairperson. You need to take advantage of this time. It's the start of the interview. First impressions go a long way. Make sure you take advantage of this. And you just need to practice. Practice in front of the mirror, practice in front of a camera, your family, your peers, your boss, it doesn't matter because you can practice it so many times to make sure that when you're delivering it, it's your strongest performance. And when you start that interview strongly on a confident presentation that complements your case study, it's going to give you confidence. And it's also going to give the assessors confidence and it's a great place to start. It'll give you a solid foundation for the rest of the interview. Make sure you start it in the right way. My next tip is know your submission, which I know sounds obvious, but some of the things you would have included within the submission you may have written a long time ago. And come the time of the final assessment, if you get a question on some of those things, you may not be able to immediately recall it. So when you're preparing for the interview, go back through your submission, look at your case study, remind yourself of what you've said, because when the assessors are doing their preparation before they see you, they'll be crafting their questions based on your submission alone. So it's really important that you remember what you've put in there. Now, I've had experience as an assessor where I've asked a candidate a question based on something very specific and based on their submission, but their face went blank and they couldn't actually recall including that within their submission. Now, that's not to say that what they put wasn't true or it didn't happen. It just means they couldn't recall it. But it's vital you, you're able to because that's the final assessment and you need to perform on the day. So remember to review your case study. Remember to review your competency, competency submission. Look back through it. If you were the assessor, what would you ask you? That's a great way of preparing. In the preparation for your final assessment interview, you need to have mock interviews. I wouldn't put any candidate into the final assessment interview without at least two to three mock interviews under their belt. Now, the main reason for this is that environment in the final assessment interview will be unlike anything you've experienced in your life up to that point. When you're sat across from two to three professionals and they're really putting you through your paces, they're asking you questions about your experience, what you've put in your submission, your knowledge, they're testing your competence. This is their job. This is why they're there. But you won't have done that at any other point in your life. Even a normal interview, it, it's not as intense. It's not relentless questions for all that time. Now, in my experience, I can recall my first mock interview, even to this day, and even a specific question that I was asked. So at that point, I'd been working for nine years, they delivered a question to me in my first mock interview, and it was really simple, really simple. Can you just please tell me what retention is? Now, this is a level one question. Now, I'd been working with retention, both including subcontracts, administering subcontracts, and be doing the same with contracts with my clients. For the whole nine years, I've been dealing with retention, but when somebody delivered that concise question to me, I couldn't coherently and concisely explain what retention was. Part of the practice that a mock interview gives you is actually practice on how you can concisely communicate things back to the assessor when they ask you a question. So, so important. So please take that tip, have the mock interviews before you go in there. Be concise. There is so much to get across in that hour. You need to help the assessors get through all the questions they need to ask to validate you have met the competency requirements of your sector pathway. You can help them by being concise in your answers, not waffling, listen to what you've been asked, 
and give them the answer that they were looking for. If you are remotely entertaining a strategy of giving long answers to run down the clock, this would be counterintuitive. The assessors have a responsibility to try and keep to time, and they will do this, but it will make it more difficult for them to do this if you are not concise in your answers. And if, if we don't get across everything, they may not be able to validate you've met the competency requirements. So maybe have a think about that. Concise answers come with practice. In your mock interviews, just day to day, you could have half hour sessions in work with people, just get them to ask you questions so you can practice delivering the answers. It doesn't come naturally to everybody. It definitely didn't come naturally to me as I gave an example of the, um, the retention question I was given. I knew the answer, I was experienced in it, but I couldn't coherently give the answer um, when the question came. It's not natural to me uh, and it may not be natural to you. So please practice. Please be concise, help the assessors do their job, and hopefully they, that will mean they can pass you. My next tip is don't guess. In the final assessment interview, if you are asked a question and you can't immediately recall the answer or don't know the answer, don't guess. It's that simple. Make a note of the question. The assessors will give you the final say at the end of the interview, so you can come back to any answers you've given, or if you want to perhaps provide an answer to a question you may have passed on, you will be given that opportunity. But don't feel the need to guess on the spot. You're not expected to give an answer to every single question you're asked. With all that said, you will, however, need to do and say enough to show the assessors that you have met the competency requirements of your sector pathway. But please don't guess. If you were advising a client as a chartered surveyor, you wouldn't be guessing when you give that advice. So please treat the final assessment interview in the exact same way. Don't brain dump. When you are in the final assessment interview and the assessor asks you a question, listen to the question they've just asked you. I've seen it so many times and I know it's probably down to stress and nerves because it is quite an intense experience but I've seen candidates, they're asked a question and they hear it, but don't necessarily listen to it. They will, there will be a word within the question and I call it a trigger word. And the reason I call it a trigger word is because once they've heard that word, their brain immediately goes back to their revision and they start regurgitating everything they know about the topic that relates to that word. Now, in fairness to them, they're coming from a positive place. They are doing their absolute best to demonstrate to the assessors that they are competent. Nobody is going into that interview going out to not do their best. So, But the, the difficulty for them is that when you regurgitate everything you know in an attempt to demonstrate your breadth of knowledge, you've actually just eaten away a lot of valuable minutes in giving an answer, um, but not to the question you've just been asked. Now, from the candidate's point of view, if you've been asked a question and you don't understand it, or you're not sure what you've just been asked, clarify it with the assessor. They won't mind that at all. If anything, it'll be seen as a positive thing because if that clarification helps you give the right answer, that's great news. From an assessor's point of view, they want you to give the right answer. So please do clarify it and give the answers to the question you've been asked. The final assessment interview can seem like a very daunting experience, so I hope some of the tips in this video have given you more confidence about doing it. Now if you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel, and if you do, please remember to hit the bell so when we release our next video, you'll get that alert. Thank you for watching, it's been great to have you, this has been Construct Academy.